quilters happy saturday hope everything is going well for you wherever you are um thank you for last week um we took a break for a little bit um for for me for a, a family um event um so I appreciate uh, having that time to take off. So we didn't get uh, that week for an introduction to our new quilt, but we'll do that as we get started today on the handmade quilt. And I am so excited about this project. Uh, it's probably one of the coolest quilts I think I've made in a while completely. So I'm looking forward to that and hopefully you are too. And as we move through this, um, I there's some things that I would like to share with you. The handmade quilt is exactly the title. Uh, she is teaching and making this quilt entirely by hand from the uh, piecing to the uh, finishing of the quilt with hand quilting um, the project and all the things that you need to know in between and her book is very thorough in telling you exactly what you need to know if you are going to be choosing to create this quilt entirely by hand and just pure personal curiosity if in the chat box you could let me know at this point whether you are thinking of doing it completely by hand or if you are going to join me in using both hand quilting and or hand piecing and hand um, or machine piecing. I'm going to do a combination of both and some of the blocks as I've worked through each block and thought about what I want to do. I'm going to be mixing it up. And that doesn't mean that you have to, obviously. It's, it's your choice whether you want to make this quilt completely by hand or um, have a little bit of mix. And that shows you a little bit how I work. Uh, I, as I've shared on here num a number of times, is that when you're looking at a new quilt to start, you really read through that pattern, you really look at it, and make some decisions about who you are and your style of quilting. And that will determine where you go from there in terms of colors of fabrics, yeah, looking at your value, all of that. And so as I looked at this, I saw the hand quilting and I know that the tingling that is starting in my hands would not allow for me to completely do this by hand. And I haven't done that um, in quilting since I was on at home before going away to college in um, on the farm. So uh, I am I am going to do both and I'm mixing it up. And there's many ways to do hand piecing. There's many ways to do machine piecing. But you're gonna get um, the way that I've been taught, the way that works for me. And I want you to feel free to mix it up, change it. And then if you have a, a style or something that you know that you've learned along the way from a teacher or whatever that you think might help some of the the quilters that are here online working with me please jump into the chat box and and let that be known and so with that let's get started here is one more time on screen the quilt i i just think this is lovely there's something about it that uh, gets me excited and i think it's the variety i am a person that loves variety in my quilts and so I'm, I'm kind of a scrap quilt person I'm finding out and the more I do it the more I like that or I want to change it up or I really want to make it my own and so that's what's going to be happening um, through this quilt and um, as I've stated before on this with all of this there's for me there's even going to be some applique in here instead of completely doing that um, by uh, machine or by hand, um, even though applique can be either one. So with that being said, 
I wanted I want to get right into it so I'm going to bring you down to my table and hopefully you've got a chance to look at the the book and see that she starts out with very simple blocks and works her way through up until the most difficult so you're going to learn some skills and possibly some new techniques along the way. So the first thing we get into is what do you need to get this accomplished? And really the supplies can be very simple or um, very extensive on that. Um, choose your, your scissors, whatever works best for you. She shares the needles that she um, particularly likes. I love these needles too. And the... Um, the John James is wonderful, uh, so are the um, Tulip, and I use oftentimes these uh, straw needles. Uh, you know, that's my needle of preference. It's a little bit longer, it's uh, thinner, it's very sharp. I, I enjoy using straw needles. The pins go in here, and again, a very sharp, uh, thin needle, so the clover extra fine and the quilter select um, extra fine silk pins are really two the two only two pins that I will use on that and as you can see here as I put them on my hand hopefully you can see that they are very thin and very sharp this one is the clover this one is the quilter select and they're both wonderful needles if uh, if and when you are using them. Then you obviously you'll need thread. I have chosen because my machine likes it and I like the way it goes through the needle. With hand needle, uh, the masterpiece, um, it's a gray, a blue gray color is what I'm using because we're using mostly blue fabrics with this, at least we are. But choose the thread color according to your fabrics if you are not using the kit. A needle threader, I need it. Um, my eyes um, are old. If you use a thimble, your favorite thimble, your favorite fabric markers, and then obviously uh, the um, fabric choice. Then as we get into hand quilting, she goes quite thoroughly into using templates. And she also talks about cardstock and the, you know, clear plastic templates. Um, I have, you know, from my days of teaching, I have quite a few of these separators that I had in notebooks and things. And so I'm using that up right now for my template plastic. It's not quite as heavy as the template plastic that you buy for quilting, but it certainly works great for that and marking on it. So the, the difference between using a cardstock template and a plastic template really comes down to with the cardboard I have found that the more you mark around it the edges start to push and change a little bit and so the accuracy after a one-time use is pretty much gone whereas with the plastic it's not you can continue to cut around it you can keep marking and it doesn't um, fray or bend on the ends where the plastic is so that's something to keep in mind and with most of these blocks the cardstock will probably work because you're not going to be using these templates more than for the block that you're making your um, quilt from so there's the the template plastic on that then um, you know she goes through many different things and I want to share a couple of things I'm gonna put this book for the moment um, aside and we'll get into the blocks and stuff momentarily. So let's start and uh, get some, some things out of the way here. When you are marking for a template on the um, plastic, you're gonna be taking your book and she has all the templates in here and the sizes. Now, 
there's two ways that you can go about this. If you want to st stay very true to the, the hand piecing, then you you will want to use the templates, and especially as we get into the, the uh, later blocks because there's curves, um, there's differences, but use a permanent pen and very thin and, and sharp. I am using a Sharpie pen and it's very fine. So my tracing is going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to get me off track when I take to cut this out. Now I do a couple of different things when I do tracing and I found this object if I can find it it should be here it is I have this tool called a quilter's wonder wheel I've had it for a long time and um, it's a little disc that just ran away from me and I will sometime use, sometimes use this because what I found probably the most tedious is going around and marking all of these templates, cutting them out, and then marking every single piece of fabric with my quarter inch seam line, as you will see here. So I, you know, made my template, I cut it out, and then I drew my broken quarter inch seam line on there. But what I have found is that if I trace my template here, and on camera this is not I'm not tracing real well then I when I go to um, put it on my fabric and instead of you know tracing uh, you know I can trace around it again but if I put my pin and keep it on that I can create my quarter inch line as I go around this on my fabric and then I don't have to necessarily because when I put my template on this mark is what I'm making on my fabric and then to get my quarter inch if I'm going to cut it by hand I can use my little wonder tool and I can get my quarter inch seam line there or I can use my add a quarter ruler and simply cut it as long as they're straight lines the add a quarter ruler is wonderful and this comes in very handy when I am creating uh, curves and going around my my curves on that so I have you know done you know my templates for these first two blocks we're going to be doing the Chinese coins and we're going to be doing the um, squares the two four and six patch squares she gives you what you need from a light and a dark fabric on both of these and it's your choice whatever fabric you choose to create for this you can certainly use um, your cover for um, an idea of where to put your lights and darks she also has in the very back of the book um, hopefully you've read it and she gives you some color inspiration so that you can take your quilt to um, any uh, degree that you want and you can see that going you know using more soft colors uh, get, getting a little bit lighter changing it up a bit changes the quilt um, a lot and I think what drew me to this was the um, the dark navy blue and well who doesn't love blue and so but whatever you do she gives you light and dark and be sure to check the value of your fabrics in terms of that I want to go and look for just a second at the chat box and make sure that with the template uh, And it looks like a lot of you are going to be doing some, the combination, which is great. I'm excited about that, that we can kind of do that together. All right. 
All right. Then let's, uh, I don't see any questions as at this point in terms of templates. And again, the book does a really good job of going through that with you. But I wanted to let you know um, about the little Wonder Wheel that I have. It's Mine is called Quilter's Wonder Wheel, but it's very old. And I know that there's new ones on the market. Um, and I believe that they we have them in the shop Um or will have them in the shop. But it's it's just an adding a quarter inch seam around any shape, whether it's a rectangle square, curved, whatever. And using my add a quarter ruler and just making the process go a little quicker. I'm always about finding a shortcut and getting it done a little bit faster because I don't always have tons and tons of time um, to take for that. I wish I did sometimes, but I kind of like the fact that I can I can work it through and and get through things quickly in terms of that. All right, so I'm going to start today with hand quilting or hand piecing. I keep saying quilting, but it's really hand piecing. And I have done a few blocks already in terms of piecing them by hand. I have put together, let me take you back down to the table. I have put together this one already by hand. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that because I, I used, you know, the, the gray-blue uh, masterpiece thread so that I could see what was, you know, going on and also that it wouldn't necessarily show through. So I wanted to keep that um, true to that. Then on the coin, uh, the Chinese coin uh, block, I have already done um, these two because I want to share with you how to join the seams on that. That's what's going to be important there. So I have my needle and thread, and again, I have a straw needle. I've put a, um, so I've got my piece marked with my quarter inch seam and I pay very careful attention to here because this is where it is most important and over time I uh, most of the time you don't really even need to put these lines in between I would to start with because you're going to start to learn what a quarter inch seam is and you can you can make it from corner to corner without much um, worry about that and the other thing that I've taken to using recently because I would pin so just to hold things in place but I would stick myself with the pins and now they have these so tight so tights um, and they're just strong magnets and they hold everything together and I can have that there without it um, hurting my, you know, poking me. And so I, I like to do that. The other thing is, is that my hands get tired and I like to do this hand piecing in front of the television. And so I am starting to discover that I like this um, little lap hand uh station. I, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I just know that, that I like it and that it works well to rest my arms on on my lap if I'm, if I'm working away from a table where I can let rest my hands on. So if you have something like this, this is an excellent um, piece to add to your um, collection for those of you who are going to do hand piecing. All right, so for hand piecing, I come up a little ways away from the the corner because I don't want my knot that's going to be on the back um, right in that corner because you know the knot gets in my way. So then I take a back stitch and I work hard to get that right in that area. And already I can see that I need to get a new needle and then I take small stitches and I'll take two or three um, as I go and when um, I feel like I have a burr on the end of that um, needle I am going to move that in short stitches and every time that I start to, to do a, a number of other stitches I take a back stitch 
And what that does is just, you know, affirms that, you know, my stitches are going to stay straight. I'm not going to have that puckering as I pull later on. It's going to tighten that area. And I simply um, stitch along that, make sure it's, it's flat out. And I keep, yeah, it's, this needle is catching on my, my threads there and so I definitely need a new one and I don't know if some of you realize but you know these needles start to you know they they do get dull and you have to change them just as you do on your sewing machine and so I'm I'm a little bit away from the edge of my piece now I want I stopped because I want to go directly into that corner so that I keep accuracy when I'm turning you know my piece around and then I am going to come up in that and I'm just doing this for extra you know enforcement and I'm I'm gonna take a you know a couple back stitches And then I can tie off and knot the back. And and I I just do it the easy the easy method. Um, just getting that in there, holding it and uh, knotting that. And I got a thread caught in it. All right. Then I will take that off. Well, I thought I cut it. All right, so now I have sewn that first block. I have my quarter inch seam um, on either end and right in that. And the one thing about um, hand stitching is that you do not press this because we're not going to sew through our seams um, that way to do that. So I want to show you on these two how we're going uh, to do that because this is going to be important as for those of you who are hand stitching um, to work this. So we're going to lay these um, so that it opens up oppositely and we would we would press this or sew it along here just like I showed you and continue that way. I want to now show you how we're going to join these two pieces right here in terms of the hand stitching. I'm going to line everything up, um, get it all together I'm going to so-called pin it. And I'm going to um, use a quilter's knot And because it's thin thread, I go around the needle a couple of times. All right. So on this one, again, I am going to go up a little bit away from the end to get started. And then I'm going to back stitch, and I want to get right in that corner um, to get started here, and then start to move along there you know with my quarter inch or I, I do about an eighth of an inch stitch along there and as you're you're moving down this piece and I'm guessing most of you can't see the uh, pencil lines 
they're very faint. I don't know why I did them that faint. So now I'm getting close to the edge of this and hopefully with my hands in the way you've been able to see what really what I'm doing. And so I am going to um, go down holding this, you know, these away because I want to go right in, um, come up, and now I want to go straight down into that corner on the, you know, on the back side, keeping, you know, making sure that I have come up in that corner. So I've gone down. I've come up and I'm doing this in steps as I as I go so you can see this. I want to make sure that those are back together again. I'm going down in that. I'm coming up on the side over here in the quarter inch where the needle is coming up. And I'm I'm going to come up a little bit away from that edge and that's probably larger than normally I would. Then I'm gonna back stitch so I go right in that corner and then I'll move ahead. Okay. And continue on stitching just like I did before that quarter inch seam and moving directly along that edge. Um, I'm going to move that out of my way. I thought my th so again, I'm going to take a little bit of a back stitch. I'm, you know, moving ahead, stitching that. Going right up to the edge coming out at that quarter inch, taking, I want to make sure I get that straight, um, taking, you know, a few back stitches there. And then I am going to knot that off again. All right. So now we have our four patch and as you can see, the the corners come together. You've got that, um, you know, nicely done in there. And you want these to go opposite of each other when you press them. And so you really are not pressing them until you get them finished so that you can press them um, all the same way. And those corners in there come together and it's held together by the threads that you backstitched into there so that you do not have that gap on the front, but you have, you know, them meeting up in the center. And, you know, hopefully you can see that they do meet up. Um, they're right on there as long as you have the marks and you come, um, you go under. So basically you're, you're kind of, you're holding this um, this way, you come right up into that, you go down, you, you backstitch, come into that, come up a little ways away on this side, backstitch right into that corner, and then keep moving. So hopefully that helps um, with the hand stitching of what you're going to need to do today. Let me check um, with you over here. Um... All right. Um, uh, well, the shelves behind me are Ikea, and the boxes came from Target. The Lap App, thank you for actually telling me what it was called. Um, it is very nice. And... Um, The, the thread that I am recommending for piecing, I am using um, Masterpiece uh, Superior Threads. Um, so,
And Kathy has mentioned that there are fingerless hand support gloves that helps delay hand cramps. And I have used those and I, and I use those most of the time when I'm doing, you know, like bindings and things when I'm hand stitching. And yes, they do work. And so if you have the same issue that I have, those are great. How long do you make your piecing thread? I try to stick with 18 inches or, you know, so that it doesn't tangle and it doesn't get, um, you know, it doesn't become a burden because the longer your thread is, uh, that becomes a, bur uh, a burden to me. Um, red and green for Christmas, Kyla, sounds wonderful. And and watching Cal Bears football and the, you know, and Green Bay Packers go, you go Laverne on, on that. So whatever you're doing um, for that. So now let's talk about those who are going to be doing both. On these two blocks, I am going to be working a little bit of both because I did already my longest piece that I needed, I, I sewed that with a machine. It just, I cut it out with rotary cutter and ruler. Uh, I measured for, um, that was the wrong piece. Um, I measured for, I don't have these, I just have the hand ones here in front of me. But I made my long one for that. I'm going to do my smaller ones, um, <clears throat> excuse me, hand piecing um, so that I could show you uh, those of you who are going to be doing hand piecing, how that works and how we put that together. And then I went to the to the squares and I sewed the longest one by machine, went very quickly. I am doing the smaller one by hand. I just put two of them together on screen for you. I'll add the other one and then you set one aside in terms of the same fabric. Now if you look at your quilt, you will notice that they have two separate colors here in terms of fabric. And so, you know, if you're if you're kind of following the book or want to to work with the same fabric she is, you can see that right over here, she's used the darker fabric like I did here. And then she's moved to a different um, fabric. Actually, I on this particular one, I'm going to be using this fabric is what I've chosen for that. And then for the the one smaller squares that she has, you know, and for the for the squares that are up here and down here, I used this fabric. And then I'm going to be using that large. Um, floral print that you got in your material. Um, I, I thought that was beautiful and I like that only just bits and pieces of it showed um, in here. I know it's not the same fabric but it's close to it but you can go ahead and choose it however you want to and if you want just to use all dark and, and medium prints and use them all different you certainly can. So you have your um, square, your four patches here and you have the coins over in here so you can look and and kind of follow along you know where where the lights and darks happen use your own choices of fabrics and do what you wish for that i just happen to like the way this fabric particularly looked and uh, so was excited to do that so if you have not read the front of your book those pages um, up until the beginning. It's very helpful to do that and she goes into a lot of you know great information in terms of that and then for next week if you would have your Chinese coins done and the squares um, also completed whether it be um, hand machine pieced combination of the two whatever um, suits you that would be great and then we'll move on um, to our next blocks 
and work on that please if you get some things done and especially if you're you know your fabric choices are always helpful to to one another these two make it very interesting you want high contrast you want high contrast on this you want high contrast there and as long as you have that um, you you are good to go in terms of your fabric choices so put them up on the forum if you have those pictures if you don't you are more than welcome to email them to me and I will put them up on the forum because it's wonderful to have that and my email is divine quilts with two e's d-e-e-v-i-n-e -E quilts at gmail.com so if you have those um, and they're available you know and you can take pictures it was you know this is it's helpful to everybody to see fabric choices to see what you've done how your hand work is coming along and if you have questions you know that you can um, go on my forum ask those questions you can go on youtube um, you can ask those questions there i can only answer your questions while we're live and i like that to be able so that everybody has the benefit of hearing that so as you work this week have fun enjoy whatever process that you are working on and we'll keep moving along for um, the next two uh, blocks next time which are going to be half square and quarter square triangles and we'll be working on on those two again when they're the easier blocks i'm going to go a couple of blocks at a time but when we get into the the little tougher blocks we'll we'll go one at a time so that we can um, thoroughly understand the different techniques thank you for coming along on this journey i'm excited i'm excited about this quilt and it's been a while since i've gotten this excited so anyway you have a wonderful week and i will see you next week.